A light has risen in the darkness for the upright of heart. The Lord is generous, merciful, and just. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let's take a moment to call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Cast your kindly light upon your faithful, Lord, we pray. And with the splendor of your glory, set their hearts ever aflame that they may never cease to acknowledge their Savior and may truly hold fast to him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Thank you. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? But this is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, but not believing the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. You who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It happened that there was a man full of leprosy in one of the towns where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it. Be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The report about him spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments. But he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has been clear that under, in no uncertain terms, that uh, with the limited exception of those who have a serious medical exemption, that all of us Catholics have the moral duty to be vaccinated, to care for one another, because it's a basic principle of Catholic social teaching to believe in the common good. That is to say, it's not just what I'm concerned about will harm me or what something will do to me or what I am afraid of and not afraid of, but I have to be concerned for everyone around me, including, including those who are most vulnerable to illness and to, to anything else. So it's, it's a very basic principle of Catholic social teaching. But something, you know, that some people said in response or as an objection was like, well, why, you know, we believe in God. Why don't we just not be afraid? Because the worst that can happen is that something will happen to our body. I'm not afraid of that. I, why would I be afraid of that? My soul will still be at least intact, right? One of the problems with that, apart from the disregard for the common good, which is what we're all meant to be concerned about, is that we actually don't have the right to have that kind of disregard or even disdain for the human body. Unfortunately, that's a common thread that has kept with Christianity despite the church's repeated attempts to teach something else. Namely, that human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. And what's a human being? It's not just a soul with this sort of piece of clothing on it so that we can appear to one another and go around and eat and drink and have a good time. A human being made in the image and likeness of God means our soul is made in the image and likeness of God, but so too is our body made in the image and likeness of God. And so everything about being human and indeed being Catholic involves a special care and concern not only for our soul, but for our body. You know, we believe in the resurrection of the body. The person that you and I, that we are, is going to rise from the dead. We're not meant to be disembodied souls floating around somewhere in space or in heaven. We're meant to come back as we are, body and soul. So it's important to have that care and concern for our body as well. And if it wasn't enough to be made in the image and likeness of God, the Mass reminds us of this importance of our body as well. One of my favorite prayers in the Mass is when we mix together the water and the wine just before celebrating the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Right? This is what uh, John talks about in his first reading. He talks about that the one who came, came through water and blood. Those two things are symbols. The water of divinity the blood of humanity, the two mixed together. What we say, when I pour the water into the wine, I pour a little drop. We say, by the mystery of this water and wine, 
May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And what do we do? We receive that divinity into our bodies, and it becomes one with us. So just to reinforce that not only are we made in the image and likeness of God, but it's our body and soul that also Jesus has come to save. Let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the Church that we may care for our bodies just as well as our souls and care, have care and concern also for the common good of all people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are ill, for all who suffer in mind and body or spirit, that like the leper in today's Gospel, they may know the comfort and presence of our Lord Jesus, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, for all who have gone before us in faith, and those who mourn, we pray to the Lord. And for the intention of this Mass, the intentions of Ernest Zagabo, we pray to the Lord. Let's take a moment in silence to call to mind all our prayers. We pray to the Lord. We ask you, O good and loving Father, to hear our prayers. We make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, 
that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, and partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Well, just a reminder, immediately following this Mass, we will celebrate exposition and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. My friends, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.